All right, guys, another Cleveland Moto video. This time we're going to do something a little bit different. I want to introduce you to the Zero Electric Motorcycles, their line of bikes in a very condensed, consolidated form. What's happened is since Harley Davidson has launched or announced their live wire motorcycle, it's instantly turned everybody into a comparison channel. Like we're going to do a shootout between the live wire and the Zero. Well, you can't do that yet because the live wires aren't on the road yet. And I've seen an astonishing number of people claiming to do a shootout video between a live wire and a zero and the one thing that's happening is a lot of people are Harley Davidson fanboys or people that are just in general trying to compare things with data they just don't have yet. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is rather than tell you what live wire claims to have or what live wire predicts they're going to be able to sell the customer in whatever amount of time until they launch the product I'm going to tell you exactly what Zero has today, right now, what you can buy. The first thing is that Zero is not a small company. It's not an upstart company. It's not a guy building motorcycles in his garage. They aren't bikes that are made in China. They are an American company. They're in Scotts Valley, California. I have been there. I have toured the factory, and I have walked among the guys who are building the bikes and seen the way the bikes are actually put together. So this isn't something about like a vaporware product. This is a thing that is actually real that you can actually buy today, and you can go tour the factory. You can meet the people who actually build the bikes and engineer the bikes. So, like I said, Scotts Valley, California, this is an American-made product. <clears throat> what they've done is they've chosen a lot of parts that are like Showa suspension systems and J1 brakes and things that are race-level components, and you can get those parts from other suppliers, but they do come on the Zero Electric Motorcycles from the factory. That's going to be important when we start talking about adjusting the bike to fit you because when we're adjusting the bike to fit you, we're talking about maybe lowering the seat height a little bit or adjusting the suspension to suit the rider as an individual. And because this company is using off-the-shelf Showa components, it's very, very easy for you to do that as an owner. Change out the rear shock, change out the springs and the front forks, do those sort of things on your own. About the suspension, this suspension is absolutely top-notch. Everything is fingertip adjustable. So the rear suspension and the front suspension are both completely fingertip or like use a dime or a small, you know, device to adjust the compression, rebound, and dampening of both the front and rear suspension, making it infinitely adjustable to you, the particular rider and the type of riding you want to do. With the Zero platform, they have two different frames. So to help eliminate confusion for you, we have two distinctly different frames. One frame is called the S frame, and that's the frame you're going to see on their sport bikes and their dual sport bikes. So you have a DSR that has an S frame. If you have an SR, that's the S frame with the racing motor. And if you have just the S, then that's just the standard S frame. The S frame carries a battery pack that carries up to four batteries with an additional battery that you can optionally add to the center console, giving you five onboard batteries, which will take your range way out, I mean to over 200 miles. What we're going to talk about is the bikes in their stock configuration. No options, no accessories added, just the way you buy the bike. Now with Zero, it is a lot like Lego, so you build the bike up the way you want it. In the F, as in Frank frame, the F frame is their off-road frame, and that's what you're going to see in your motocross bikes. Your motocross is called the FXS, and that's sort of uh, FXS, rather, is the super motard. And then the FX is your dirt bike. The difference between the two is really the forks, the wheels, and the tires. Uh, the seat height is different between those two bikes, and the FX model is going to give you about a 32-inch seat height. Uh, you're going to be a little bit different on the FX. S. So it'll be a little bit lower for the FXS. And this really is a super motard. It has the 17 inch wheels on the bike and it comes with Pirelli Diablo Rosso tires. So it's giving you very top shelf components as you buy the bike from the factory. Now both of these bikes use a two battery system. The two battery system, each independent battery from Zero is 3.6 kilowatts. What I like to tell people is a very down and dirty way to know what the range is when you look at an electric motorcycle, especially with zero, is they tend to put the kilowatt hour rating right on the outside of the battery. So right here, you're going to see it says 7.2. The easiest way to do it, according to zero's 
own documentation, the testing that they've done, at the highway speeds, that bike is going to get you 45 miles, and at stop and go city speeds, that's going to get you 89 miles. What I like to say is if you look at that number and just multiply it by 10, 72, that's a good average for how far this bike can go in mixed use riding. Why does it get worse mileage on the freeway than it does in the city? My Buick gets better mileage on the freeway than it does in the city. And that's because wind resistance. Even grandma's Buick is far more aerodynamic for its size than this motorcycle is. And if you want motorcycles to be super aerodynamic, you have to talk to Craig Vetter. And he'll tell you about how you can make motorcycles aerodynamic. And when you really work hard and put a lot of time and effort into making aerodynamic additions to a motorcycle, you may someday be lucky enough to approach the level of aerodynamics that you'll have in a standard affordable passenger car. Cars are so far ahead of motorcycles when it comes to aerodynamics, it's, it's ridiculous. And that's why these bikes get much better range in the city than they do on the freeway. Also, all of Zero's bikes have regenerative braking and regenerative coasting. So anytime you're not on the gas, you're actually making electricity. And anytime you're braking, you're making electricity. You have an app on your phone that works with the custom setting on the bike so that the owner can choose how much regenerative braking, how much regenerative coasting, how much of the available torque they want to use, and what their top speed is. And they can set that all through their phone. No third party contract is needed. You do not need to pay for that service. That doesn't cost you anything more per month or per year. It's free and it's in your phone. That also is a diagnostic tool. It turns your phone into a Bluetooth connected diagnostic tool for this machine. It is very easy for the bike to then communicate with your phone to the Wi-Fi or even dial up and send your logs and your data information or any fault codes you might have to Zero Corporate in California. So you can have the technicians looking at the performance of your bike if you happen to have a problem. And we've been selling them now for over three years and we have had very little in the way of problems. The bike does come with a five-year warranty, which is hard to find in the motorcycle industry today. And we are not, I mean, we are not of the opinion that this bike uses that warranty. The ones that we have sold and we've put on the road have been very reliable, very robust. When we talk about these different models, so there are two different frames. We have the S frame and we have the F frame. And there are two different motors. We have the standard motor, which is gonna give you in the neighborhood of 78 foot-pounds of torque in these dirt bikes. And that same motor is going to give you around 81 foot-pounds of torque in the sport bike. Then we have our R motor, which is going to give you 116 foot-pounds of torque. And that's where you're getting those numbers. When you read reports and you see videos of zeros going from 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 3 seconds, it's using that 116 foot-pounds of torque motor. And usually you'll find that in the SR motorcycle. The SR motorcycle is very, very lightweight. With all four batteries on board, giving it a, a well over 170 mile range. Again, I said that down in dirty math, is you'll see it says 14.4 on the side. That's your 3.6 battery pack times four. 14.4, multiply it by 10, that's 144. So driven in a mixed use environment, you should be able to get 144 miles out of that bike the way it comes from the factory with no additional batteries installed. You have the option of installing either an additional battery here in the top of the bike, or you can put in a high speed level two charger into that slot. Or do nothing and just charge the bike at home on your wall outlet every night when you park the bike, and in seven hours, it'll be charged. So that's what I do when I operate the bike, and it works perfectly fine for me. I've never had range anxiety because I know how far I'm gonna go and I know how far the bike can go. I also have ridden the zeros enough to know that when they get down to that very low 2% or so, that there's kind of a, a false reserve tank in there. I don't want to say it to let people get used to it, but I have gone over 10 miles on a bike that supposedly was out of electricity. That's kind of neat that the engineers built that in for us. When we talk about that 116 foot-pounds of torque motor, that's available on two of their distinct models. It's available on the SR and it's available on the DSR. 
The DSR is an SR on stilts. It has the taller suspension, it has taller wheels, it is equipped with Pirelli dual sport tires. The bike does sit up in the air a little bit higher. So on the SR, which is our sport bike, you're going to see a really low 31.8 inch seat height. When you get to that DSR, you're going to see something more akin to like a 33 and change seat height. So it is a taller bike. If you're a taller person, the DSR is going to feel great for you. And if you're a shorter person, 5'2 is not a problem on an S or an SR. An S is just an SR with the 81 foot pound of torque motor instead of the 116 foot pound of torque motor. Pricing. This is where we have seen some pretty wild numbers out there. The base model FX or FXS, S being the super motard version, FX being our dirt bike version. And it's a pretty solid trail bike. I've taken it in some pretty gnarly, gnarly places. It goes real good in the dirt. When you order this bike in the least expensive way that you can buy it, you're gonna be paying $84.95. Now that's before any sort of discounts, it is very common for Zero to be running some sort of a first responder discount or a motorcycle safety foundation course presenter or student discount that's usually worth between $200 and $500 to the consumer. And they don't like having extra old bikes hanging around. So it's very common to see a dealership selling last year's model for about $1,000 less. But base price, just walking off the street, $84.95 for this bike. <clears throat> that's gonna be with one 3.6 battery. One. Why such a small battery? I mean, that's only between 19 and 46 miles, depending on how you drive it. Why would you even offer a, bi a bike that has such a short range? The answer is not for the guy that needs to drive 40 miles to get to work every day and is barely going to make it. The answer is for the guy who's actually going to take the bike out and participate in competitive events. If you're doing motocross and you're doing that sort of thing, you're doing what are called heats. And those are very short periods of time. If you had the ability to make your motorcycle 40 pounds lighter, but still have the same torque and the same performance, wouldn't you do that? Well, Zero does. And that's how they do it. By instead of running the bike on competition with two battery packs, you run it with one. And the bike is totally happy to run with one pack. A good friend of ours that we sold a Zero to who lives in Pittsburgh has a very defined travel that he does. And he knows his commute. And his bike, when he bought it, had two battery packs. But he decided it was more fun to run the bike around on one battery pack because the bike was 40 pounds less heavy, it changed his center of gravity, and he could do wheelies all day long and more fun. He's never had a problem running the bike with only one battery pack because it's designed to do that. With one battery pack installed, 3.6, the FX or the FXS, you're looking at only 251 pounds. And the reason I get a little loud when I say that is because that's, sh that's shocking. That's very, very lightweight. That's the same weight as a Vespa 150cc scooter. So that's an extremely light vehicle that you can take a lot of cool places. Maybe you're the kind of guy that's going to have the battery in it and maybe have another battery standing by because you're competing or whatever. That's entirely up to you. But Zero's giving you the flexibility to do that. If plugging the bike into the wall on your standard 110 outlet is not a fast enough way to charge it, we're going to look to our right and we're going to see what they call the Delta Q charger. This is about 600 bucks. The price is going down though as technology speeds up. And this gives you the ability to plug 96 volts directly into the bike. So all of our bikes have a direct DC input. The bikes all have a charger on board that converts your household AC energy into what the bike uses, DC electricity. But the conversion of electricity does take time, creates heat, and costs us some efficiency. Every single Zero bike has the ability to take direct DC charging. That's part of the original design of the vehicle, and they all carry their own charger on board. So you can go anywhere in the world, doesn't matter whether it's a 110 outlet or a 220 outlet, 50 hertz or 60 hertz, plug the bike in through a cord that we all recognize as the cord that goes into the back of your computer or the back of your data monitor, <clears throat> whether you're in the United States or whether you're in Europe, doesn't matter, same end, you're going to plug that in and any one of these bikes is going to be charged. That means that any pop machine, that means any gas station, that means any restaurant that has a plug outside that they run their bug zapper on 
is capable of charging your bike. I might be sitting outside of a gas station at Oklahoma at 2 a.m. that won't open until 7 a.m., but if their pop machine is illuminated, I don't need to wait for the gas station to open. I can just plug in and borrow some electricity. Also, to that effect, the cost of charging. Right now in the city of Cleveland, we're spending about nine to 10 cents per kilowatt hour in the wintertime, high demand. If you live in Hawaii, you may be spending as much as 30 cents per kilowatt hour. But these bikes are only gonna take seven to 11 kilowatt hours to charge. And that means you can charge the bike fully for, in our case, under a buck 50. So in the case of a 14.4 battery, on that motorcycle right there, which I will have a range of over 179 miles, it's only costing me $1.40 or $1.50 to go 179 miles. Doesn't matter whether I'm paying for 87 octane electricity, 89 octane electricity, or 91 octane electricity. It's all the same and the bike will run that distance on that low cost amount of fuel. There's no valve adjustments. There's no clutch to adjust. Our, our drive system is a belt that's gonna last you 45,000 miles. The brakes don't get as much use as they do on your standard gasoline powered motorcycle because the brakes we're using are gonna be offset by the regeneration. So when you're regenerating coasting and regenerating braking, the motor is taking a lot of your speed away and turning that into electricity that you can have fun with later. So we don't use as many brakes as we would on a normal motorcycle either. So our brakes last longer. If you take <clears throat> the fully loaded, comparable to anything you want to compare it against, not just the live wire, Energica, whatever, stock, no extra battery added, SR, which has a top speed of about 108 miles per hour, and that's governed top speed to keep your insurance affordable. If you want to go faster than that, talk to a nerd. They can help you. That bike with a 14.4 battery is going to weigh only 414 pounds. That's also light by any standard. To pick up a machine that has 116 foot-pounds of torque and weighs in at 414 pounds and gives you over 179 miles of range on a fully charged battery, that's special and you should be paying attention to that. And that's $16,495 before any discounts. So the message I hope that I've sent to you is you can charge them anywhere there's a wall outlet. It is the slowest way to charge them. It will take you up to 11 hours to charge overnight to get these bikes up to full speed. Level two charging is become ubiquitous in the United States. This is a level two charger. This is a level two charger you can put in your house. You can plug this into your standard 110 AC outlet, and these go for around 400 bucks. This will give you level two charging capacity on your bike, cutting your charging time down dramatically if you choose to, or if you feel like you need fast charging. Any of these bikes, you can add a level two charger to them if after you've had the bike for a while, you decide that you wanna take advantage of some of the level two charging infrastructure that we have here in the United States that is becoming more and more popular as more electric vehicles are on the road. The level two charger, this J1772 plug, this is the common standard for everything that's out there today and running around. This will get your bike charged up in what they say over 100 miles of charge per hour. And that is also very impressive. Sit down for a meal, plug into a level two charger. What we've noticed is a lot of the level two chargers that we're seeing at retail establishments are sponsored. So you may have to uh, plug in and get a little advertisement from Revlon or Maybelline or somebody about what kind of lip gloss you should be using, but you're also gonna get free power. And we noticed when we were in Hawaii that a lot of the chargers, a lot of level two chargers were absolutely free charging stations. You just had to watch a video and pretty cool. Uh, it's nice to get stuff for free. Marketing companies are aware that this is a great way. They know you're gonna be captive. They know you're gonna be there for a few minutes. It's also a great way for companies like a restaurant that wants to draw people into their restaurant to say, look, our business is listed on PlugShare. We have a level two charger out front and you can go ahead and bring your bike in or your car in and charge for free while you're eating one of our delicious sandwiches or one of our meals. That's pretty cool too. 
The other thing we're going to talk briefly about is level 3 charging. Level 3 charging is where we're headed. That's going to be called CCS or Combined Charging System or uh, SAE charging is what we've also heard the naming is that, that is going to be. And that's direct DC charging. And direct DC charging means we're leaving AC out of it. We have a device, we have a transformer that's getting power from the grid and creating this 96 volt power package that's going into this bike directly, not even using its onboard charger, which is like the Delta Q charger we talk about here. It's giving a 96 volt output direct current and it will charge the bikes much, much faster. And as we see, now that's the nice thing is all of these zero bikes are backwards compatible to that direct DC charging because every single one of them has a port already on the motorcycle to accept direct DC charging. As we see more of the direct DC charging being available in the United States, thanks to Volkswagen and the penalties they had to face as a result of Dieselgate, a big pile of money, over $2 billion, had to be spent on installing an electric infrastructure, and that's going to accommodate that level three charging, that direct DC charging. So if you are an electric motorcycle owner, look forward to the time, very shortly, when you'll be able to plug your motorcycle in and charge it up, not in an hour, not in two hours, but in 20 or 30 minutes. And that's when electricity is going to have officially presented itself as being the excellent alternative to gasoline. Because right now gasoline still has the advantage that I can drive 170 miles, pull in and squeeze three and a half gallons of dead dinosaurs into my gas tank in less than three minutes and be back on the road again. We can't do that yet with electrics. We have to do a little more planning than that. But the advantages of not being on gasoline far outweigh the day-to-day -day advantages of being on electricity. We all have that fantasy that we're gonna jump on our motorcycle and drive to California. I have not yet done that, just haven't done it. I've not taken any motorcycle that I bought and said, you know what, I don't have anything going on today. I'm gonna drive to Wyoming. I just haven't done it. Even the motorcycles that I own that are designed and set up to go long, long distances I'm using them usually at about 45 or 50 miles per day. Some days I may do as many as 120 miles. But anything I do bigger than that, anything I do longer than that, there's some planning involved with that. I'm making that a trip. That's a thing that I'm going to plan for. But for every other one of these mundane trips, 200, 300 times a year, commuting, grocery getting, everything else, I have to look at my circle of range and the distance I'm going. And if that distance I'm going is less than 179 miles, there's absolutely no reason I couldn't be doing it on this motorcycle with the factory stock battery that it comes with, not having to add anything to it. Now, about adding to it, whether you decide to add the charge tank, which gives you the ability to charge level two anywhere in America at a much, much higher rate than your level one wall charger, four or five times faster, or if you decide that you'd rather take that power with you rather than get the power when you get there or get the power on the way, you're gonna take the power with you you're going to add a power tank. The power tank is going to be another battery cell. It weighs about 40 pounds. So be aware of that. You're adding 40 pounds. It's like when you decide to fill the gas tank up on your KLR. You're adding a lot of weight to the top of the bike, right? So if you decide to do either one of those, those options are going to run you around 2,300 bucks. Your dealer can install them. Hell, you can install them if you're handy but they're available and that is for people that want to win the range wars and say, yeah, I can go 230 miles. I can go over 200 miles on the electricity that I've brought with me. I understand the argument a lot of people make about rather than bringing the electricity with you, if you're operating in a metropolitan area, just get the electricity while you're out. And that's true too. If you're smart, you do a little bit of planning, you could park your bike at location A, go grab a sandwich and come back and your bike's totally charged up again. Maybe do a little bit of grocery shopping, maybe do a few errands running around and have the bike ready with a full charge. So instead of getting your electricity at home, you could be getting the electricity when you're out on the street. The other thing too is, I don't see any reason, I wouldn't have a problem at all if any of my staff came in with their cord. And if somebody's gonna be at work, I certainly my company can afford to spring for a buck 40 worth of electricity for them to charge their bikes while they're at work today. That's pretty cool. So this cord goes with the bike. Hell, you could have 10 of them. They're cheap. It's just a standard cord you use to plug in your computer or your laptop or your TV screen. This is a standard cord. You can park it right on the bike. You can have one waiting for you at your office desk, whatever. The bikes are clean. They don't leak gas. They don't smell bad. 
So there's no reason they shouldn't be allowed to be in any building anywhere or parked anywhere at all. It's a lithium ion battery. Believe it or not, they don't burst into flames suddenly for no, you know, they're not some Samsung Galaxy phone that they're not going to let you go certain places with it. These bikes have been absolutely reliable and totally bomb proof. Department of Defense has given them a contract. Our military uses them all over the world. Our law enforcement uses them all over the world. The bikes sell like crazy in Europe. They sell like crazy in Asia and the United States. It's a product that as an American, we should be proud of. It's something we should be lining up to let the rest of the world know about that this comes from here. It's tested by every magazine. It's tested by everybody. It's a product that we shouldn't be nitpicking against. We should be lining up to support. This is something that all of us should be very proud of because it's happening here. So get a chance, stop by a zero dealer, talk to them, learn a little bit more about them. What you'll notice about zero dealers is they desperately want you to take a test ride on the bike. Take a test ride, ride the thing, understand the noises it makes, understand the sounds, understand the visceral feeling. It is very, very easy to hate on it until you've ridden it. But what we see here is anytime I take a person off of a Harley Davidson or off of an Indian or off of an old BSA and we put them on this bike and we send them out on the road, when they come back, they're happier than when they left. And that is an extremely disruptive experience to get into the world of motorcycling and press buttons you've never had pressed before. To grab that throttle and experience 116 foot pounds of torque is life changing. So guys, that's what I got for you today. Ride fast, take chances, and go visit your local Zero dealer.